success. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not Mareike Schumacher, who was supposed to give this talk uh, for, about our work, so, uh, but she sends her best wishes to us. Uh, she couldn't come, and um, now I have the honor of replacing her, and I also have to say that everything that goes well now is due to Mareike's preparation. Everything that goes not so well is due to my non-preparation. Right, okay, so um, we would like to talk a bit about stories of sustainability and um, how one can analyze them using digital tools and methods or at least uh, try to approach the question. And this is what I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, in the next uh, 19 minutes. Um, we want to first um, say something a bit about what ecocriticism is and uh, why the, uh, the um, issue of sustainability makes uh, is important or how, how it arose, um, then we will show um, what uh, cultural generally has to do with it and uh, how cultural sustainability can be seen as an essential driving force. The core of our talk is the fourth point on the outline, which is the, uh, um, a case study based on text from German uh, Romanticism where we try to identify sustainability issues. And finally, there will be a conclusion about uh, how successful or not our approach is so far. Okay, so um, sustainability, at least from a, a, a bit German perspective, can be dated back to the year 1717, uh, when um, um, Hans Karl von Karlowitz mentioned uh, the term nachhaltend uh, in his publication Silvicultura Economica, and herein he describes that wood should only be used to an extent that can grow back in the same time frame it is used. So um, he does coined an ecological understanding of the term sustainable. Later on, the German Duchess of Essex, Weimar Eisenach, Anna Amalia, used a print, this principle of uh, sustainability in a sense of renewability for the worldwide first forestry reform that was basically based on sustainability. Um, however, we, we, we could say that there was uh, some time that not, nothing much was happening in which not, nothing much was happening about uh, sustainability, but in the 20th century uh, it was then uh, became much more prominent uh, as a kind of a buzzword for the ecological movement, starting maybe in the 1970s with the Club of Rome uh, uh, and its publication with the report uh, "The Limits of Growth," uh, in which the fundamental principle, principle of re renewability in the sense of Karlowitz's understanding of nachhaltig is explained. Um, then, um, in 1987, the so-called Brunland Report was published after the World Commission on Environment and Development had come together in order to define sustainable development and analyze the worldwide ecological, social, and economical situation. Then, in 1992, the Conference of Rio followed, in which concrete modes of action for the United Nations were made out for the first time and another publication uh, that is uh, important uh, is the understanding of sustainability in the UNESCO framework of futures literacy, um, as it highlights the importance of learning how to reach a more um, sustainable development. And as you can also see now on the downside, there's more the literary and literary studies part of it. There's, of course, German Romanticism, which will be uh, the uh, issue later. But there's also a development that can be seen more or less following uh, the recent politi political development, um, because in the 1970s, uh, the focus uh, started to go, go back on ecological issues. And um, it was based basically on the relationship of human beings and nature. Um, um, later on, we had um, plant and animal studies that became a common aspect uh, also in literary criticism. And in the 1990s, uh, we can witness an increase in literary genres uh, that highlight ecological subjects like the climate crisis. So there's uh, publications that deal with um, climate and sustainability um, issues. We then have the increasing publications of eco-thrillers and climate fiction, and that was a intensified interest in analyzing these specific genres in literary criticism. And today, uh, in eco-criticism, uh, which is also a part of literary studies, uh, uh, next to 
subjects of ecology, um, social and economic, economics aspects play an important role. And maybe something, a side note that's not uh, on, the, on this slide, is that we, of course, in digital humanities, we are also dealing with sustainability uh, already for some time, even though in most um, cases, sustainability is more understood like something that is like a digital sustainability of, for example, infrastructure. We had the, the German area uh, conference, uh, DHD, for example, in 2017, with the title Sustainability, but you also have infrastructural reasoning about it. And, but there's also some work uh, that starts to be uh, done. Um, um, sorry, there's an, a second thing that's uh, also becoming more and more prominent is, of course, sustainability of uh, our behavior. So like uh, traveling to conferences or not, uh, using resources for computation, all these things, so that's also an issue. And the third one, that's the one we are uh, trying to address here and uh, hopefully in the next years is the one that tries to bring digital humanities close to more eco-criticist um, approaches and tries to discuss them. There is some work already here that's uh, been uh, done, for example, by Stephanie Postumus, who tried to connect the age and uh, eco-criticism, but there's also has been uh, plant studies uh, and uh, all these things by Langer et al. and so on. Okay, but what is sustainability, uh, um, uh, or at least how do we understand it? Because of course, like for every concept, there is a lot of uh, definitions one could use, but we are basically um, trying to tackle uh, two understandings of sustainability. The first one is uh, uh, the definition of sustainability as a ecological balance. So that's the one that I uh, presented in the very first, uh, so in 1717 uh, with the, um, Understanding for, of Karlovitz, uh, sustainability can be reached when resources are only used to an extent to which they are renewable in the time they are used. So it's not being renewable in the next 2,000 uh, years. And the second understanding is uh, the definition of uh, sustainability as something that's connected to just or justice. Um, their, um, sustainable development is a development that meets the needs uh, of the present without uh, compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So that's a, a quote from the Brundtland uh, report. So that's the uh, justice for future generation um, that's um, addressed in that second understanding. And basically, uh, typically, there are at least three pillars of sustainability, but we, as you see, uh, just decided to uh, turn the first pillar down. So um, this is a uh, maybe a bit idiosyncratic understanding of pillars. But anyway, it is because ecology, of course, is at, at the core or at the ground of uh, sustainability, at least typically. And we have also the two other pillars uh, of uh, economy and uh, um, society. Because at least, so that's maybe since the 1990s that this is discussed, um, because uh, there, they also do relate, of course, uh, to the uh, way we do use resources. And uh, the most important thing maybe being that they have to be at least stable, so both society and, and economy, in order to have a, a good background for sustainability. Additionally, there has been a fourth pillar uh, suggested, which uh, is culture. And there, um, um, again, it is about culture being developed in a sustainable uh, manner. And um, also, uh, it means that culture can be seen as a relevant driving force for sustainability. And I think that's also the point of entry for digital humanities or computational literary studies analysis. Um, um, of uh, sustainability in literary texts, because uh, in that uh, view, or f from the view of people who uh, see culture as the fourth pillar, one could say that culture transports narratives uh, that have the power to add to social settings, and through narratives, the importance of sustainability and sustainable development can be shown in a way that moves and influences people. So that's a, the, the, the force of narratives that can be used there. Okay. So why is this important? I think that's maybe something I need, don't need to explain, but uh, uh, one example could be if we look at uh, uh, extinction of um, um, species, so the importance, why is culture, that's the, its meaning, uh, important. Um, one can see that it is, uh, um, one can witness the peaks and the downfalls of interest for certain species uh, according to their extin extinction. So some species are present in cultural narratives despite their extinction, because of their ex um, extinction, um, 
sorry, um, such as dinosaurs, um, of course. Some get more and more cultural attentions because of their extinctions, such as the dodo, for example. And it's also quite common that a social extinction follows an ecological extinction, which means that species that die out in real life stop being mentioned in the narratives of a given culture. And to be culturally extant, uh, on contrary, means that uh, there still are stories told about certain species, and um, this can be of core importance for ambitions of conserving biodiversity in general, and especially for the individual species in question. So that's a, a place where also narratives and literature reaches uh, into the real world, I would say. Okay, so what did we do? We, have a, uh, we made a case study on principles of sustainability in literary texts from German Romanticism, and um, we took into account that the concept might have needed a bit to uh, come from forestry into a cu cultural project as the literary texts. Uh, we focused on Romanticism uh, because it's uh, basically like 50 plus years after uh, Kalowitz's publication. And um, again, a side note, there's of course other uh, literary um, phases that could be looked at because they do deal with uh, sustainability things, but maybe Romanticism or I think Romanticism is the most uh, obvious one because uh, it uh, is the first one where nature, again, is very present in the text, so there is a, a certain uh, probability for a sustainability to be important. Okay, what did we do? We tried uh, first to tackle it with, uh, by approaching nature descriptions in texts, and we automized uh, the detection of nature descriptions in a sample corpus with 90 romantic texts, all of them novels, um, and uh, took out uh, 150,000 uh, tokens uh, from 15 of them for, as a training data set, and we also had test data uh, from two novels uh, where we uh, had annotated uh, 10,000 each, 10,000 tokens, and this is the text that we were using using for nature descriptions. This was developed in iterative uh, mode uh, um, based on a collaborative annotation. So we did that. We used the, uh, the Stanford uh, um, NER um, classifier um, to uh, classify those uh, seven, um, or actually it's eight because of a catastrophe, um, um, categories. And this is the outcome of it. What you can see, so the different colors mean that's the different amount of annotated tokens we have used. So what we can see in all cases is that the more tokens we use, the better the results get. Uh, so that's one thing, but the maybe less uh, nice thing that is that in most cases the um, results are not so nice or not as good as we would like uh, to have them. Um, with probably exception uh, of uh, habitat and uh, and plants, um, whereas um, the the, the uh, categories of industrialized nature and catastrophe related to nature they're really badly or not one could say recognized, which is also probably because there's very very little uh, annotation uh, data for that. So if we have a, a, a look at what comes, what's the outcome of the application of the classifier on, on the unseen, unseen 73 remaining romantic novels, that's basically uh, what we have here. Um, and what we see is that the most frequently uh, annotated category is habitat, uh, and uh, also uh, um, followed by uh, the uh, uh, plants and other non-motion entities. So one could say that the untouched nature seems to be highly frequent uh, in this text, whereas the other categories are not so frequent. We also uh, checked for the term uh, nature, which is uh, only uh, the, the very term nature, so natur uh, is only very rarely present. Okay, so um, what did we do then? We had a close reading of the peaks in nature descriptions, and uh, so we took uh, the, the chunks uh, uh, of uh, text where we had the highest uh, concentration of nature descriptions, which were, it's a 1.3% overall in, in the corpus, and uh, surprise, uh, they did not point uh, to anything that we could relate uh, to sustainability. Uh, instead, it was rather uh, 
um, passages of texts where texts were talking about uh, nature as something that is anchored either in the present time or uh, with a backward view uh, to antique uh, nature conceptions, so like nature that has always been there, so there are no discussions of sustainability. So what did we then? We tried uh, another approach and had a look at this biodiversity um, question and uh, looked at the annotated plants and animals uh, in our corpus. And uh, interestingly, in the list of the annotated words, we found out that bears are a species that is soci socially uh, um, extant, so meaning it is still present um, in our corpus, even though it has been extinct. Um, while this may be a little interesting first uh, when taking into account uh, that bears uh, died out in Germany in exactly the time frame of German Romanticism, we started to notice that the relevance of these references, um, there may be a relevance of references of this for the discourse of sustainability. So we have here the uh, 124 occurrences. Um, so in 1835, supposedly the last bear uh, in Germany was hunted down. And um, as you can see here uh, from the light green line, um, it falls into the time frame in which the novels in our corpus have been published. And terms that are, include bear are, bear are mentioned uh, throughout the corpus uh, and overall in slightly more than half of the text. So the graphic shows that the frequency of mentioning the bear is not only very high altogether, but the species uh, definitely is societally extant here. In order to see whether the fact that bears were actually dying out during this period of time was reflected in terms of sustainability, we had again a closer look at the references and we found out um, that the bear is referred to as different, um, in different functions, I would say. It's referred to as a metaphor for strong and fierce people. It's referred to as a provider of resources for well-being and being lazy, so the resources being like really skin uh, to rest on or fur, these things. Uh, it's referred to as something that has to be tamed, like the dancing bear, that's something little surprisingly probably to be hunted down, or also as a wild and dangerous beast, but again, no references uh, to need for protection, no bio biodiversity issues, and um, no um, um, re relation to uh, renewability of resources, awareness, uh, of any of the kinds one would expect when talking about extinct uh, species. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, basically, uh, it means that so far uh, there was no success in identi identifying sustainability in our corpus, but we still think, well, there's something we can uh, take away. As I said in the very beginning, is uh, since uh, or if we um, agree uh, with the people who say that uh, it's sustainability is a cultural thing and needs to be maybe even reinforced uh, via narratives, so it's very important to also analyze them, also computationally analyzing them. And of course the challenge is, and also the opportunity, to identify rare and highly interpretive phenomena which are more complex than we have uh, seen them now because what we did is basically a, a word-based um, analysis uh, trying to find uh, only um, semantic word-based patterns that would lead us to somewhere, but it's probably, and we also probably also have uh, seen that in uh, um, when testing uh, different, uh, or reading actually, uh, parts of the corpus, that the parts where sustainability may be important are not exactly the parts where nature is addressed, for example. Right, and... Um, um, Nevertheless, I would say we found some relevance or some evidence of relevance for the development of the ecological crisis um, because uh, using the concept of social extinction, we found traces of how the outdying species of beers has been perceived culturally and socially and not being perceived as a problem, basically. And um, in the end, we also found that the heuristic using automation and other digital tools can at least lead to relevant insights into the notion of sustainability in literary texts, and that's something we would like to work on much more in the upcoming years. So thank you for your attention, and we look forward to the discussion. <laughs>